Hello, everybody. Welcome to Instrumental Breakthroughs, the podcast where we explore the psychedelic origin stories of your favorite creative superheroes. We're here to explore the intersection of um, creativity, plant medicine, and the like. I'm your host, Daniel Shankin. I am the founder of Mount Tam Psychedelic Integration, where we offer uh, psychedelic integration circles and other educational events. And I'm here, yes, wave. I'm here with, with my guest, uh, Amanda Sage. Um, Amanda was born in 1978 in Denver, Colorado. She's an artist using her painting as a tool for spiritual planetary growth and transformation. Her paintings represent multidimensional aspects of humanness in harmonious balance, inspiring of remembering of an energetic interconnectedness that is present and shared with all things. She is also the co-founder of the Vienna Academy of Visionary Art, is on the board of directors of COSM, the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors, and pioneered painting retreats in eco-villages such as Paradise One in Byron Bay and Puta Mona in Costa Rica. Most recently, she has started a collaborative visionary art collective called The Vision Train and recently released a online exhibit that you can all see live now called Mushroom Mind. Mushroom magic? Mushroom magic, yeah. Mushroom magic. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you for that lovely introduction. Man, it's nice to uh, remember, oh, all those things and all those places that uh, have happened. I feel like we've been very stationary this past year, but at the same time, reaching our mycelial web out super deep through the internet and uh, having really fantastic conversations, bringing together the tribe in a way that hasn't happened till now. I mean, I, I really adore the, all the gatherings, but being able to connect, you know, in, in ways through the web is way cool. And so having a conversation with you, Daniel, is lovely. Nice to be here. Thank you. Indeed. Um, so before we get to this moment, where we're all connecting on the web because we can't go to Byron Bay, Australia mm -hmm. with as much ease as perhaps we once could. Um, I'm curious where, the, where this sort of began for you, where the intersection of entheogens and how they started to inspire your art and sort of a which came first question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which came <laughs> first, the chicken or the egg? And you know what? Eggs are quite a thing for me, too. Maybe we'll talk about that at some because point. Because of the tempera? Actually, no. Well, the they're eggs, in your art all over the place. They are. They're all over the place. They showed up at a very pivotal moment. Uh, I, I'm sure those listening can relate to pivotal moments. You know, there's things you don't know where they're coming from, but something that all of a sudden changes the course of your life. Um, and... It was so with the egg, but I have to say it was so with psychedelics too. And uh, mm -hmm. it was, it was though, it, it wasn't the psychedelics first though. Actually, it was a, my adventurous spirit um, took me on, uh, on a ride <laughs> after, okay. after I finished high school. Actually in high school, I, I, I went to school in, um, in Colorado, Boulder, Colorado. I was really blessed to be a part of this uh, first class uh, in the Waldorf school um, in Boulder, the first graduating high school class. So we were very experimental in our um, experience of school and very involved, which was awesome. I really enjoyed the teachers and my um, uh, my my classmates there. I actually just spoke to my high school art teacher um, the other day. He was a Japanese fantastic realist, which was my first actually entry into um, seeing this kind of work of the visionary kind of fantastic realism is actually this movement uh, that my one of my later mentors started. His name was Ernst Fuchs. And, and was very, these guys were very influenced uh, through entheogens. Uh, so I started, it was, it was artwork that started, you know, opening, blowing my mind. Um, and and I, 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 I had this sense that there was something through that medium that would um, 
there, there was a key. <laughs> there was a key to being able to paint anything that seemed so interesting to me. And at the time, I didn't actually know what I would do with it. Like, well, if I could paint anything, what would I do? You know, what would that look like? Um, and, but I, so I wasn't too concerned with the what, I was more concerned with the how. And I ended up working, uh, getting an opportunity to, to work together with an artist, Michael Fuchs, who is an American, Austrian, uh, very classical painter, the son of Ernst Fuchs. And I went down this rabbit hole. I know we were talking about rabbits a moment ago. They're coming, the rabbits are coming back. Uh, rabbits and eggs. Is Easter coming or something? You know, this is some kind of a- Hopefully, re- yes. It's cold here. <laughs> it's a repetitive thing, but the birds and the sun is coming back. We're in the Northern hemisphere. Uh, but the I, I I felt that if I learned how to paint anything that, that you know, the, the thing, the, the, the subject matter would come. And, you know, this all ties in to this psychedelic journey because it, it, it wasn't until I had gone deep into um, really studying life and learning how to wield the brush, you know, and some wield the guitar, right? You wield an instrument and you got to practice it like until you don't think about it anymore right? Until you're not afraid of it anymore. And um, I got to that point where I was, I felt very much um, attuned with my instrument. And then it was like, well, what now? Like, what can I contribute to the world? What can I contribute to, you know, that's going to, that's going to benefit somebody. I can't just paint, um, pretty still lifes or portraits. I was really into portraits and man, that was a fascinating experience. It is to sit and be able to, um, you know, represent someone through your, through your own vessel and to show them some aspect of themselves that they would have never been able to see before. Um, but I wanted to go deeper. I wanted to go beneath the skin. I wanted to see what was, and I, I had experienced, I had, I had done quite a bit of meditating when I was actually in high school. I was uh, introduced, I was a part of this youth group through the Unity Church. And we went and did a lot of meditating together as kids. (laughs) Seems kind of strange. I wasn't, my friends were going to to dead shows. I went to one actually, um, where I got to see Jerry Garcia uh, once, you know, but I was the designated driver. I was taking care of everybody. But so it wasn't until later I was I, I really was ready. I was ready for for the journey to dive into the ineffable, to dive into. And I knew from being around many of the artists and I knew there was something there. And um, it was really cool. That invitation when it came through. Um, yeah, when I put it out into the universe, I just had to think about it, really. I just have to think about it <laughs> in many ways. Do you, th- and, mm-hmm. uh, do you think that the meditation and the discipline of painting helped prepare you for that? For sure. Definitely. That it was maybe I, different for you than other people who just jumped in willy nilly. Well, the, yeah. I mean, in, 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 the, in the time between then and now, I've met many, you know, many of my students, different people that have come to work with me. I've had a very different introduction where, you know, very young age, very high doses of something um, put them into states of just like, holy shit. And then we got to like, you know, unravel then that matrix from a diff- different angle. I was so, I was so ready. I mean, I, and I, I ended up meeting, I was drawing portraits in a gallery in Vienna, Austria. I lived in Vienna, Austria for 11 years. And, uh, I was painting, drawing portraits in a gallery, and one of my um, one of my um, clients that day. I never met this young man before. Happened to be a chemist. We had a lovely conversation, and um, you know, he he offered to to support support me in in my first journey, and it was so magical. I was so taken care of. 
you know, the the aspect of of guidance of well, just of the right setting. Like I was in a Carlos Castaneda cactus garden with llamas right outside of Vienna, and I, in the starlight. And I remember seeing this little this little tiny fly, which I probably couldn't have seen with my you know, in daylight, <laughs> this little tiny fly, I watched it or a little bug, it fell from one leaf to another leaf. And I could hear its wings as it like bounced. <laughs> I was just like, absolutely like in awe, you know, and it made sense to me so much more made sense to me around, um, the art that I was around and actually had been introduced to me through my high school art teacher, um, where I wasn't really paying attention. I was in high school. I was more interested in, you know, the kids around me than what was up on the screen. And, um, but I, the, the artwork, the artwork of, of uh, the surrealists of Ernst Fuchs, Ernst Fuchs was this, he was one of the founders of fantastic realism. And his son was the teacher that took me deep into the classical painting, really learning how to paint. And then I ended up working with Ernst Fuchs as an assistant for um, 10 years. And I was all through my 20s. I, I got to work with this great master and watch how he didn't really know what he was doing either. You know, I mean, and, and especially at that I mean, he did, but he didn't. And he knew that the clue in really pulling out the, uh, of pulling out the image through the field of the mystery, you know, you had to go into these spaces and these states of, of not knowing. And so I would watch him look at his art often in a very, uh, in a very, somewhat perplexed way, you know, of like, what is happening here? I don't know. And he taught me how to, I don't know if he taught me, but he demonstrated for me the listening, how to listen to the painting. And there was, and he was deeply influenced by his experience with entheogens um, in the 50s. Right. And so I'm hearing that there's this very interesting dichotomy of what you can know, which is things like learning how to paint classically and learning how to get painting into your nervous system so that you don't have to think about it and don't have to be afraid of it. And then bringing that to the ineffable of the thing that you can't ever know and sort of letting those two dance to kind of bring forth, I don't know, a, a painting of a fly jumping from leaf to leaf. I've never tried that one. <laughs> you didn't listen. paint the you didn't paint the fly. I haven't painted the fly. I haven't painted. Did the you paint a cactus yet. garden? I could. I've painted some cactus gardens. I could paint the fly actually on one of these leaves in this painting because I'm seeing it in the reflection. <laughs> this little painting here. This is a painting. This has a sage plant. You know, it started mm. as a still life. Um, right. So that's kind of fun. The idea of kind of we start with something simple and kind of let it emerge, let it kind of grow and evolve and, and see what else comes through. Yeah, I think when you um, open yourself up to collaboration mm -hmm. with one could call it spirit, one could call it hmm. So many different things, you know, what, 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 what is it? It's the, it's, it's the mystery in many ways. Um, the breath of, of all knowing the, the Akashic records, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we have access, we have access to something that uh, if we make ourselves available to, um, will play with us, will dance with us. And I think this is what happens in art like a, pretty much all art forms. And I think we experience it, not just maybe through art forms, but through creativity, you know, and, and we're creative in so many different uh, ways, mm -hmm. you know, in life. And um, there's something about riding that wave, you know, when you catch that wave, um, 
and you feel like you're in, you know, you're in sync and your senses are somehow very, very um, open, uh, available, alive to respond, to adapt. Adaptability is a major thing with uh, working with, you know, creativity, I think. And, and but it's something that it, you need to get past that barrier of, um, of fear and judgment of, mm -hmm. um, you know, where you get yourself, you're like, oh, wait a minute, I don't know what's going on here. And that happens. That's going to happen over and over and over again, no matter how, um, you know, natural you get. But you learn how to dance with that weirdness. Right, because that stuff freeze, uh, freezes up collaboration. I liked that you used the term, you said collaboration with the divine, you know, or with the spirit. And I hear people say, use the term, oh, I'm co-creating, you know, and, but that's slightly different. I mean, it's the same, but it's slightly different. And, you know, collaboration is a little less self-important, perhaps, than I'm a co-creator. You know, it's like, I'm a collaborator. You know, it's like, yeah, we're, we're seeing what we can make work. And kind of being willing to kind of have that dance and kind of bring yourself warts and all, like you're saying, you know, it's like sometimes that weirdness makes me freeze up and sometimes this happens, sometimes that, but, you know, we find a way to kind of navigate through it. And then to what extent does that struggle show up in the art as well? I think a lot of times people don't see that struggle, right? Mm -hmm. Because, or don't even, don't hear about it. Cause you see an image and you're like, how did that happen? Right? Mm -hmm. Like, and <laughs> there is, and, and, and also when you consider, okay, how long did this take me? You know, people also, they ask that question all the time. How long did that take you? And it's, it's such a mystery, you know, mm -hmm. it's such a mystery to me, even if I were to log my hours um, of actually painting, you know how many hours I look at the work or I am thinking about it, I am dreaming mm -hmm. about it and literally perplex, frustrated, like uh, in, in, the, in the like spiral of kind of, infinite like questioning like what do I do next like what's the right thing and you know that that is is I don't know how to get around that to be honest it's something that is a part of the process and so would it be fun would it be as rewarding to paint if that wasn't part of it probably not it would probably get boring because there's something about the puzzle and about the, the, the detective work <laughs> mm -hmm. of figuring it out, you know? And the thing is too, especially with images, like the ones that are around me right now, these images haven't, like I didn't see them before and then decide to paint them. Mm -hmm. They evolve through the process of the work of showing up to the canvas. So that's interesting because Zavi was on here a couple of weeks ago and that is different than the process he described where he goes, I get a download, the inspiration hits me and then it's just my job to labor it out. Totally. Yeah, it's so different. It's so different, mm -hmm. the, uh, the approach, you know, like each of us has um, a different way of describing what we've experienced mm -hmm. and a, a lot of my like I don't have any um well maybe not but I, I don't have I don't I haven't tried to specifically describe an experience I've had because most of the psychedelic experiences that I've had have been so multi-dimensional so mm -hmm. multi like I mean, I'm sure most of you can, <laughs> can uh, agree with me that it's something to um, actually translate that so directly uh, is, yeah, I mean, it's a massive thing and big hats off to those that, have, that really have achieved that. And I think some of those people that 
that have our uh, our dear friends Allison Gray and Alex Gray, the way that they communicate their experience of of that realm. Um, my approach is much more the um, dance with that state mm -hmm. as the image is crawling through. <laughs> is like, right. yeah, and and then it's something that I recognize. And it's something that what psychedelics has shown me is this way of accessing and dancing with the creative state uh, is something that that comes through. And it's something that if I show up, it's like I can tap into that. Tap into some kind of like teacher and there's whispers. There's so many downloads that happen when you're in the medicine. But mm -hmm. then, and, and it's like, and there's so much that happens so fast. And it's like, how do I integrate this, right? You take notes, you can maybe make some little jots, but there's something that's imprinted in my visual vortex, cortex, right? Like mm -hmm. it's there. And that is something that comes through when I show up to the canvas it'll like seep in, in little ways because I make myself available. And so it comes through in really strange ways. And so I have to get myself sometimes into a state that has like a little bit of like the lights a little bit off, you know, it's like all those magic moments of three, four, five o'clock in the morning, you know, when most people are asleep is like, that's when they come and they whisper and then you like the gates open and you're just like, ride that wave, you know, right. ride the wave. <laughs> and then you can't put the brush down until the muse lets you, you know, you gotta like go with it. But sometimes that doesn't, that it doesn't open just, you know, at. Have you learned things that you can do to sort of invite the muse to make, make it more likely to show up? That's a good question. And like yeah, endogenously ish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, setting. There's all kinds of it's uh, remember, I, I mentioned monkeys earlier. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's on my notes, please. <laughs> I, I use that um, as a reference because the, the the monkey in the mind you know, of, of, oh, distraction over here. Let's go play with that. Let's go play with this. Let's go, you know, so many um, other, you know, distractions <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, calming that, finding a way to make friends with your monkey um, and to get the monkey to focus here. Like, look, this is going to be really fun. Let's go down this rabbit hole and get everything else out of the way. So usually, you know, doing a good like purge, of the studio um, and cleaning, maybe make it, making sure the kitchen's clean or something. That's usually like a real great trigger for me. And then just putting it in my calendar mm -hmm. and committing to the time. Great, you know, great podcasts, listening to great podcasts, listening to great music. And you know what I love? This is, this is what helps me more than anything is live painting to live mm. music. Ooh. It's the best, uh, you know, even if I can be on stage with the creators that are making the music and, you know, and you've got so much energy, like that live energy and that focus right now, right here, it, you know, you can do so much with one brush stroke, like take all that energy, put it right in. Will you tell us about a particular time you were on stage with some live music and what happened, and what came through? Wow, there's been quite a few memorable moments. Um, we can do two. Yeah, well, I I did I did one. <laughs> there's one that pops right up in um, Denver, actually, at the Fillmore, um, with Papadozio and um, Rising Appalachia. It was a benefit concert called Earth Night, and I think it was 2014. And I was, I had the, like the bet, great amount of space on that stage. This is a fantastic big stage, packed audience, 
um, really great energy there. And I started, I, I started from a uh, dark black canvas without any sketch. I like to start, you know, if I can with nothing and by the end, you know, ideally have, have a finished piece. Well, not ideally, sometimes works, you know, they'll, they, they'll come through and it's like, okay, you're gonna probably spend another few years on this one. Uh, but this, this piece was so clear and so direct and the, the relationship that I also had with the musicians and how they saw me as a part of the experience. I mean, that's just so helpful, you know, cause then you catch each other's eye, you know, and there's like a, there's a, a collaboration and that kind of collaboration that can happen multimedia um, experience, you know, for those that are a part of it, that are, that are watching, you know, and, and live in it, also contributing, is ecstatic. It's orgasmic, you know, and it, for everybody involved. And I think it's because we are all calling in the, the spirits, you know, to play calling in that that creative um the creative the creative the great creative you know does, to, yeah. to dance with us in different ways you know one of them you can hear another one you can see another one you can feel you know and that's part of like that's some of the juiciest moments for me Right. Well, we're talking about like um, setting, you know, set and setting the setting yeah. of, I mean, I, I grew up, you know, I grew up in, in music, you know, um, that's where my journeys took place. It wasn't like sort of in a ceremonial circle for, for many, many years or anything like that. And so, yeah, I totally get that. And, and I, I love it. You know, I remember light shows happening and then the live, live painting didn't come until a little bit later on the mm -hmm. scene and you know it was really fun and really really added something and it kind of the festivals to be able to kind of walk down the artist row and kind of just sort of a, like have a an art gallery in in motion you know and i think it says such great things about our culture right now i'm thinking about like symbiosis with like the large you know like they build an arena so people can watch people paint you know like right. it's a and it's like, I think it says really nice things about our culture that, you know, there's so many people whose attention span is so blown out that they can't even finish a tweet. And then on the other hand, you have people who are willing to sit in a amphitheater and watch and literally watch paint dry. I wonder though, when you say that, that, that literally can't finish a tweet, but I wonder if that person was given the opportunity you know, to be in that place. Um, mm -hmm. I, I have a sense it would be transfixing, you know, like right. it would, and, and there's something about that, that we need, uh, you know, especially here we are with the screens, you know, we have mm -hmm. this, we don't, we're, we're not in the, the smell, you know, we can't smell the paint. <laughs> um, you know, there's, there's, something very kind of challenging around that but the the experience in when you're engulfed by it um, is something that takes you away takes you transports you to another realm and this is something where I don't where you don't you, you don't even need any you don't need to ingest anything almost right. you know and that's well, I think what a lot of these festivals have created is these environments that is recreating in a sense also the psychedelic experience right ineffable things i mean I, I like that you said that about you know the difference between reading social media posts and watching art is because you know they, they told me i was add when i was a kid and kind of what i've learned is that i'm just not good at faking being interested in stuff yeah you know, it's like, I can't like, like, why can't you pay attention to this stuff that's like super boring and probably not even true? Like, why are you instead <laughs> gravitating towards stuff that is meaningful and deep and profound? I don't know. I must have ADD. I, I, the, the medical establishment just 
you know, didn't have that um, reference. Many of the people within that, rep, you know, and it's, I think it's the beauty of our times now and one of our great um, opportunities, you know, for, for, you know, this next decade for us to really like, as, as, as a human um, species to turn things around, you know, is potentially and hopefully this integration between the entheogenic uh, medicine realm and the, you know, the Western medicine, all the things that have been explored and, and studied and all the, you know, there's so much greatness that has, uh, that humans have really um, discovered and it's time to integrate that, bring it together. It's like, it's not one or the other. There's great, there's, there's moments of necessity, you know, for all of the above, but how do, how do we really like look beyond, uh, you know, putting a, 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 an individual into a category like, oh, you just, you must just have ADD instead of like, actually, well, what are you interested in? <laughs> what is actually your, what fascinates you? Where does time disappear? You know, and, and that's it. That's a huge, um, it's a very different way of looking at the human being. I was, I feel like the school. That's that my I new favorite to, question, by the way, I don't want to interrupt you, but I just want to say that where does time disappear for you is my new favorite question. Oh, I love that. That's mine too. <laughs> We're just, because when that happens, we go into a space where there is the infinite is possible. That's a true visionary realm. Yes. And so I was just thinking, as you were saying that, you know, creating environments that honor both, you know, the Western medical as, you know, medicalization of things like psilocybin and MDMA and, you know, mm -hmm. ketamine are starting to happen. And then trying to connect with, you know, indigenous wisdom, and then also connecting with the wisdom of our modern thinkers and visionaries, such as yourself, like, how does, how do we create something that is syncretic there? And, and I'm thinking like those, the, the, the medical professionals, the surgeons, people that understand the body from, from the inside, because uh, in, in, a, in a different way, it's like, yeah, there's, there's things that we can't think our way out of, you know, right. and, and, and so, you know, and I think in uh, facilitating, uh, you know, great breakthroughs for people with entheogenics, the, the marriage between, to have, to have a marriage between the medical establishment or, or individuals within that that really understand uh, the body as well as those that really understand, uh, you know, the potentials of the space that these that these uh, medicines uh, can take take us into. Mm -hmm. You know, th that's where I think people can really be helped. But because there's plenty of people out there that are trying to solve things within their bodies that also need medical help, like real, yes. I, I would say, you know, and, and that's, it's not either or. And that's what I see happening a lot is people will say like, put it kind of like all in a, in, in, in a basket, like, oh, I don't, you know, I never go to the hospital and I totally understand that. Or, you know, I don't go to, but what if we, let's find uh, people that can walk in both worlds, you know? Right. Like we wear glasses. <laughs> There's no amount of peyote that was going to like make my eyes 2020. Or maybe yeah. I just didn't need enough yet. Yeah, exactly. I think that's. Like I wasn't a, committed a, enough really to the important. process. That's just stupid to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just like, let's, let's be not, let's not uh, delude ourselves, you know, right. too deeply, you know, and that's what can happen though. We can go too deeply down um, one rabbit hole or the other. And I, mm -hmm. I feel that it's a time more than ever that we need to um, be open to the gifts, to the gifts and the gold that, that each of us carry. You know, everybody yep. does carry some gold. And it's like, it's so divided. There's a lot of um, divided uh, fields out there currently uh, and you know through the whole political and um and even in the in, in medical and 
but this is it for me it's interesting because it's like okay there there are conversations that need to be had and where can these conversations be had where can we remember also that we are um all of the same fabric and how do we mm. focus on that that's what i'm really interested in because i feel like that diversion towards ooh the senses the sights the sounds the smells the like what makes us actually really like here what makes us it's 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 this experience in this body it's this experience um and that's very it, it's not intellectual mm -hmm. you know and that's where i think art is an incredible tool to help us come back to a place of 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 remembering maybe to come back together again, you know? Right, to that place of presence that mm -hmm. is undifferentiated and un unperturbed by the fluctuations. And this is where it's like, for each of us, it's, it's, it's something different. There's so many different kinds of music out there, so many different kinds of art. You know, what do you choose to put on your wall? What do you like to look at every day? What is a reminder? What helps you remember? to come back together again. Like what, you know, and that's what sacred art is, is supposed to do. Mm. And this is where I see visionary art and sacred art, you know, um, have a meeting place there, you know, they're, they're quite connected and it has something to do with uh, this describing of a state of a, of a place and being able to transmit that through an image that somebody else can see and resonate with and can help train us, can help train us towards a, um, train the monkey, <laughs> train right. ourselves to become more present, right? Yes. Um, what I like about this is, you know, there is, you know, we know that spiritual bypassing is a problem, right? It's sort of claiming spiritual principles as a way to avoid what's really going on. But what you're talking about is having an actual spiritual connection that helps to recontextualize and put in perspective what's going on. And I think that that's a huge difference. I hear a lot of people talking about like, oh, I want to kill my ego. I got to kill the ego which is kind of preposterous because only the ego would want to kill the ego. And right. Who else would care? You think presence cares if you have an ego or not. Um, but, and I would like to see more people working to cultivate their vision to just see what's beyond it, to kind of see the sacredness that, that they are already. Right. Right. Yeah. And that we're, that we all have that access. There's not mm -hmm. just a special few, you know, there's this with, uh, um, you know, idols, creating idols and, you know, gurus, you know, that's there, that I, there's, there's place for that. And I, I guess, you know, and, and teachers, of course, but there's something of the, the real teaching of the teacher is that you can, you can go even further, you know, and each mm -hmm. of us, has that and I find this with with many people around the idea of the artist and that the artist is this kind of um only only something for certain ones you know you're mm -hmm. either born an artist or you're um you have that special touch or you have that um you know and I think that there's definitely some that have a more natural you know, ear or a, na a natural eye for some things, but each of us have um, a way of doing things that is uniquely different to another completely. Mm -hmm. And that is something that is um, very, like it can be trained depending on your level of curiosity of how and, and how much forgiveness and exploration you're willing to do. And, um, I, 
I, I, it makes me sad actually. That's it's, it's a point where I, with, with people that'll say immediately, Oh, I'm, I can't do that. I'm not an artist. Um, and that is something where I think that in the coming years in this time of healing, of, of regeneration, of, of the potential of that lies ahead of us for the regenesons. <laughs> I love that word. Um, is that yeah. is that we can um, you know we can explore our own creativity and have more spaces that are uh, available to to us to explore that because I think what it does is un it'll help unravel a kind of um, a kind of fascia or something like needed fascia that's like gotten too um, um, too embedded or too you know that has it's it's a kind of uh, like webbing that has been trained into our uh, like since we were children it's in our society it's in our like how we're supposed to be who we are what we have access to what we don't have access to and we're in an era now of that veil being lifted right where no we actually are all artists we are all have access to a to a creative force that is surging through us if we can realize it right and this is where psychedelics like thank you psychedelics you know for giving us that elevator <laughs> you know, ride right to the center and opening our inner eye, you know, like, and, and then to be able to come back and share that in some way, whether it be in writing, whether it be in music, whether it be in, uh, through art, you know, we can bring pieces of it back and share it with each other for those that have, you know, have not gone there yet or may never but still they are a part of it because what is some of the stuff that we experience when we're there is that, wow, we are all so connected. We are connected beyond our uh, wildest imagination, you know? And when that door is open and you get to see that and you get to feel it, you know, there's something that never goes away. That's with you forever. You see an image, it's, it's with you forever. I had an experience not um, a few years ago with ayahuasca, and that was one of my, I, I hadn't actually experienced ayahuasca until um, like three or four years ago. It had been something where my, my art had been in magazines and books. I'd been on panel discussions around ayahuasca, and I was the one that was like, well, it's just, I don't know. She hasn't called me yet. Like it just had never, hadn't been the right setting. And, um, but I had this incredibly beautiful experience um, where, where it, the plant showed me how we are also plants. We are great descendants from plants, you know, and we're like these fruits that are running around <laughs> with, with thumbs and arms and legs and, you know, and we have this, and we've developed this really like powerful antenna of our, of our minds. And, um, but we're, we're, we're still plants. We're still fruits. We're a part of that. And um, wow, it's just so, so amazing. And it's so, there, there's, there's an infinite amount of possibilities of things that can happen through you. You just have to be available. You have to make yourself available. And that's kind of like coming back to what are those practices, you know, that you do or that I've done to, um, to invoke the, the, the creative dance. You have to make yourself available. And what are those things? You have to explore what it is. You know, maybe you need to do some movement, like body movement. Uh, maybe you need some, like, you know, a specific kind of tea <laughs> or, uh, you know, need to stay hydrated, sunlight. Uh, oh God, there's so many things that every, every- Most of the things that the plants plant. need. Right? Right. Water, water, sunshine. 
Um, and then also the, you know, on, on the flip side, you know, what are the practices? We were talking about the fear and the freezing, you know, and the awkwardness and like, what are the practices that we do to kind of dismantle and unwind those so they stop getting in the way? Okay, I, one of the best ways is to, is to have some friends. So to have some friends to explore that space together with a supportive environment, you know, mm. and this is where like um, having a community, you know, being a part of a workshop where there's an interactive quality and, um, you know, something where it, because together, you know, you put, you, you support each other in going down the rabbit holes. Uh, you know, and, and in a supportive environment, many people that I have met that have gone through art schools, there's, there's unfortunately quite a few that have some kind of trauma around um, being critiqued too deeply. Like they, they, they weren't supported in, in exploring where they wanted to go. And so they kind of like wrapped it up inside and hid it away and said, okay, then, well, I'm just going to go do this. Right. I'm going to do what, you know, I get more, you know, praise for maybe, or it's, it's, it's so painful to be criticized for your inner world, you know, and there's so much of the art world that has so much criticism in it and so much kind of like elitism as well. That is, I don't know. I, I don't get it. I think it's so counterproductive. <laughs> You know. I mean, anytime anybody gets gets out from in front of the TV long enough to make anything, it's kind of a miracle. It's a revolutionary act. Right. The TV by all well, nowadays, it's just the 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 phones, the the you know mm -hmm. the 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 distractions. So this is where it's like you can get together and do group distractions and group like support, and this is where. Uh, the vision train comes in right we but, but before you do vision train but i, I yeah. want to do it but i wanted to I, I wanted to segue into it you beat me to it um <laughs> <laughs> well you said one of the things you said earlier is that everybody can be an artist we just have to train to do it mm -hmm. and so i'm wondering if there's like a double entendre in vision train there really is <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's so many uh, little things like that because the, the train actually has, it has, is embedded in our language. Uh, like train language is, is, you know, we use it all the time. Like, oh, fell off the tracks or, oh, I'm back on track or, you know, there's so many little things like that. And so we have, we have discovered that there is something on the train we are training uh, each other and ourselves to go deeper, to become more um, skilled, more um, you know focused in certain ways than we would be on our own uh, through through the support of a collective. And sometimes it's distracting, right? Sometimes it's distracting. It depends on you know where's the train at, at what phase of the journey. Is it in the, you know, and where are you in your journey? Because sometimes you may hop on and everybody's um, chit chatting away, you know, talking about their art, talking about all kinds of things. And that can be distracting from what you're needing right now. Or you jump on, everybody's listening to music and jamming away and, and, and you really want to talk to somebody. So, you know, there's like, what, what are your needs at that current moment? You know, we're, I, I see that developing as the cars develop on the train, because you can hop on the train and you can, you can go to whichever car you need. But it really is like the focus of it. When I started it in um, almost a year ago, it was March 24th, 2020. Um, it was an invitation to artists and friends and you know anybody that was looking to uh, dive into their creative, um, their creative practice um, to, to come together and be alone together during this time of great sh shifting globally. I mean, we've never experienced this, something like this massive pandemic that, you know, 
put everybody at home. You know, it connected us in some strange, strange way. And the artists, of course, you know, they're not too foreign from from the experience of quarantine, <laughs> you know, from, you know, the mostly voluntary what we do, you know, we, we, we love the excuse to be in the studio and diving deep into our work. Um, but this, this, this experience of so of everyone having to be in that, um, you know, was really prompted this invitation. Be like, all right, guys, well, we don't know if this is going to work or not, but let's try. Let's, uh, we started a Zoom, a Zoom meeting and uh, just put it on 24 hours and that it would repeat every day. And we or self-organized to make sure that there was somebody there almost every time. For the first six months, we had every trip um, coordinated with a conductor. And uh, conductors are, are people that raise their hands and said, sure, I'd be happy to learn how to share music, uh, maybe do an interview, uh, you know, the share a little workshop, a skill share. And what we did is we offered, we said, okay, the conductors, you're, you're a special crew that wants to, um, to be a part of the facilitation of this. And we're going to train together how to use this new medium and what can we do with it, right? So, and I see that the train is a place to come and and, and sharpen your skills in whichever direction that is. And maybe it's just because you want you, you want to practice. So get on the train and get to work, right? While you're listening to whatever's going on or being a part of it in whatever way, uh, as well as like maybe you want to eventually teach or you want to start a podcast or you want to... Um, whatever it is, it's actually, it's like a decentralized school. It's like, can we all be students? Can we all be teachers? You know, and it takes you into a different state of, of um, experience in a group. You know, it's not just like, okay, I am, I'm the teacher, you know, I'm a teacher in another Zoom room sometimes you know and there's times when I'll take on the conductor hat and I'll be like all right guys here we go and then everybody's like where are we going Amanda I'll be like let's you know and 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 we take each other on journeys um one thing that I have been doing on the train quite regularly is hosting these vision sessions which are are really fun it's kind of like okay we're gonna we're gonna show up there's gonna be a group of us we're, whoever wants to take notes we're gonna take collaborative notes and we're gonna pull out of the field of the creative vortex that we're creating now, the possibilities, the ideas, the potentials of where this train is going. Where are we going? You know, and, and to just brain shine about that. Instead of brainstorm, we're gonna brain shine. That's Corey Blair. She is one of the train riders that came up with that thing. So we're, we're, we're learning new language together too. And we're all over the world. That was one thing that I recognized because of my teaching all over the world and traveling over the past 10 years, I've built up, you know, um, you know, family really all over the world. And I was like, guys, we could, we could keep this train going. And, and, and it still is going. The sun never sets on the vision train. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. And someday... I see it becoming a real train, you know, uh, you know, Cat Stevens song, the peace train. I oh, do. There's, there's so many great train songs out there. And, you know, it's, this it's a train metaphor. is bound for glory. Yep. Yep. There's, and then all of the and, Grateful Dead train songs. So many. Why? You know, like the train is this incredible vessel. It's this incredible vessel that brought us to the end of the Western frontier. And it built the world that we're in today. And in many ways we can look back on that and be like, well, I guess they thought that was a good idea at the time. But there's much of this industrial uh, you know, revolution that is also where we stand now, as we look back, we're like, well, that's kind of poisoned the earth here. It, uh, you know, all kinds of, aspects but that's it, not right? but but poisoning the earth i don't know if it's 
essential to trainness. Yeah. You know, we're seeing more and more that there are more ecological answers to trains. And exactly. just like, you know, the fact that they're for the people and, you know, it's certainly better than everybody having their own car. Right. No, so there's, there's so something many very things. egalitarian about the train. Exactly. Exactly. And it's also, I mean, this is where I see, you know, going from, so the train went all the way to the end of, of, of the road. Uh, and then, you know, so what about that going back, you know, that journey back um, on those tracks to look and see like, well, what, where have we come from? All of the also, the pursuit of the West was very much also about trying to find home uh, of people that had been displaced, you know, and, and had to leave for one reason or another their places or searching for, you know, some utopic vision, right? right. Now we're, we're not, we're, we're in a different era where there's no more thing to, uh, no more land to take over, right? Mm -hmm. It's the, it's, well, it's space. And it's also like, what about going, now it's time to actually really process and remember that so much that has been squashed or exploited and, and, and destroyed is actually what needs to be also embraced. Um, right. there's back to the thing about marrying the, you know, the Western medicine and the Eastern medicine and the, and the indigenous medicines, you know, we need to come together. And that's where I see the train, the train that I dream of mm -hmm. carries the genius of humanity and not just an aspect of it right. back on the tracks on a journey of regeneration of remembering and it's the, it's the next biggest party on planet earth in my eyes. And it's not my idea, but I think mm -hmm. it's a really great idea. And I think that a lot of the songs and, you know, it's been predicted and the time is coming. And I think it's this decade that it's going to happen. And then what it will do is it will sow the seeds, you know, to, to support communities everywhere um, to, to, you know, come together again, uh, you know, around their local, what their local watersheds, um, mm -hmm. you know, learning the, about the plants and the, in their local environments, you know, becoming more connected uh, to the earth. And this right. is where, you know, we're going to actually, when we look at the, the waste, you know, we look at the, you know, the packaging, all the things that come like, you just go to the, the supermarket, you know, and you become more attuned to, well, if I buy this or I buy this, like what, where does it come from? What's in it? How is it packaged? What happens to it? It's not like you throw something in a way and it just goes away. No, we are connected to everything. And our children, the children of our children of our children are going to really understand that because they're going to be digging through <laughs> the piles of all the things that we've thrown away, you know, forgetting that we were connected, that we are like a part of this and we need to be true stewards of it. You know, so this is where, like, I get on the soapbox of like, what is, what is the purpose here of the work that I do, that I'm interested in the images that I paint? You know, the big, and when I was a young person, I, I could sense something you know there would be a mission that i would feel so that would i would feel the fire in me um you know just rise up in in excitement to um you know to participate and this is what i feel like we have at our fingertips and there's so many people out there that still don't know like where do i begin what can i do to be a part of this regenesis, and the thing is is like you'll know you'll you know as long as you're curious those books are going to come into your life those podcasts are going to come into your life you know things that are, are going to help remind you it, you know of of it, it'll be a clue you know 
and mm -hmm. your part in the puzzle, you know, is there. It's just about getting yourself into a state of listening to see, okay, where, what's my piece of the puzzle? What's my, what's my train car look like? Because each one of us is a train car, I think. Right. And so, first of all, I'm still struck by the immediacy of this decade. You know, you said, I think it's happening in this decade. And and that rung really true to me and was like, whew, you know, I had to take a breath. <laughs> it is. Um, and yeah, I've, yeah, most very clearly. I also, you know, when we're talking about people who want to figure out where to start, I want to call back to you talking about your beginning and the dedication to the craft because I do see a lot of folks who are, I had a vision, I'm opening a healing center. It was like, okay, well, like, what do you know about architecture and building? What do you know about getting loans? What do you know about managing teams? You know, it's like, what? Well, no, it's just, it's going to go, I'm just going to go with the flow. <laughs> and you just, <laughs> right, and you're laughing because, you know, that's it's a little bit preposterous because, you know, there's a place where the rubber meets the road in three-dimensional reality. Yeah. And, you know, as, as high as we can vibrate, you know, and as much as we can align ourselves with being magnetic or whatever the language of the day is, you know, there, there's something to be said for, you know, appropriate use of technology. Um, the other thing that I was also, I was talking to a friend of mine who is a um, a farmer and you know he says I'm looking around and everybody's planting their flags in the ground I wish more people would plant oak trees mm -hmm. oh I love that yeah it's like what <sighs> well, are we doing to like plant things that will grow for real it has to become more more trendy maybe mm -hmm. and I think it's a step by step as this as the world as we know it crumbles which has been happening at a very accelerated rate for everyone this past year, mm -hmm. we start to question even more and also become in some ways open to other possibilities, you know, and, and it takes, it's, it's, it's monkey see monkey do <laughs> to mm -hmm. go back to the monkeys, you know, it's like, one step at a time, what, you know, this group of people built this beautiful per permaculture garden over here and you get to walk by it every day. And then each day, and then you see, you, you, you get to um, get a glimpse into that world. And, and then, then you talk to them, then you get involved yourself because it's a community garden, you know? And it's step by step and oh, that food tastes so much better, you know, if you grow it or if your friend grows it or somebody nearby, you know, and it's a, it's a step-by-step step. and this is what the train is to me. It's, it is about this training and everybody is invited, you know, and it's not just art. No, it is the art of living, you know, um, that is a part of this. And so it's like, and, and to be creative in all those realms, you know, and, and find what is that thing that makes you jump up and makes you feel passionate and excited and, and focus on that study that until you go through it and so what you're saying about the you know the practical aspect of taking the vision and bringing it into this realm of reality of uh, tangible reality right um, that is something that we we talk about my partner and I Joe Bob Merritt we we he talks about the four dimensions and how in the first time the first dimension is the visionary realm and in that space everything is possible that is in the, in the dream, in the vision, right? Uh, and, and the second dimension, there's, there's, there's more resistance. The second dimension is where that vision needs to come into form. It needs to be drawn out. It becomes a drawing. It becomes writing. You know, that's where the business plan happens. And oh gosh, how hard is it to take some fantastical vision and turn it into a, into a business plan, you know, and make budgets. And to be able to present it to others so that others may see your idea. But that also is like a painting is also the second dimensional work, 
was you have to draw it out of the field into a form that can be shared with others. And then you go into the third dimension and that is the realm of actually building, you know, of building the building, putting up the walls. And there are more and more constraints as you go up in these, in, in, you know, in these dimensions. And so once you build the thing, you know, that's in the third dimension, then the fourth dimension is the operations, <laughs> you know, and how does that work? How does it, how does it become a fluid space to uh, orchestrate your vision, right? And, and then you're working with people, lots of different people with lots of different ideas, you know? And so it becomes more and more challenging as we go through these dimensions. But the thing is, is a, a, an oak tree did not just come from, you know, it didn't just show up. It started as mm -hmm. a little seed and that little seed was put into the ground and through the resistance of the earth and the pressure around it, it pushed through until it became a little sprout, mm -hmm. right? And without I the love, resistance- I love that's not even, I'm sorry. No, no, finish your thought. Without the resistance of the earth, it, it, it cannot come into the, the, the realization of the prayer that is in the seed, right? right? To then become a home for the birds, you know, and all the creatures and to become this like breathing uh, this, the, the, the lungs of the planet, right? Right. Yeah, I was just going to jump in and be like, and that does, that's not even counting what's going on in the soil. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. All the nutrients. You know, there's the pressure are... of this. Yeah. Yeah. That so has been is... building since beginningless time, which kind of reminds me you know, if people tell them, ask you, how long did it take you to paint this painting? You can be like, you know, basically my whole life up until this, since beginningless time. Exactly, exactly. And so this is an invitation too to everyone around uh, seeing resistance as something that is, is, is not in your way, it is in your way, right? It is a gift, it is an opportunity. And where resistance um, grows is also opportunity growing, right? Your prayer needs to stay strong though you know and sometimes it'll test that prayer what is it what is it that you truly want what do you really want and are you going towards it in every way that you can step by step you know while listening being patient you know this is when when i get stuck in a painting and when some of my students get stuck in paintings this is what i'll i'll advise often is to uh look and see what is it that you know you can do for sure because there's come back what, to center come back to center what can you you can finish that little blue part over there you can finish mm -hmm. painting those rocks you know where you're stuck on like where does the hummingbird go um go finish painting the rocks you know mm -hmm. and then like magic the painting will tell you exactly where that needs to go. But if you're constantly thinking of too far ahead and not focusing on what you can do right now, you get stuck, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, and it's such a natural occurrence. You just look at a stream, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, a, it's all around us, but we, we, we get stuck in our heads, you know? So we, we need to come back to center. This is where gardening is such an incredible tool yeah. uh in this time of healing mm. you know i almost love you know there are times when i don't love it so much and there are times when i really love the resistance and the distraction because i really enjoy bringing myself back to center um mm -hmm. you know like in a meditation or even in a psychedelic space where i'm like i'm gonna you know my intention is like i'm gonna hold this vibration like, I'm going to see, yeah. like, if I can cultivate this thing. And this is kind of what I want to do. Like, I, uh, um, I was doing this a lot when, when we, I realized I was going to have a baby. And I was like, I'm just going to like, I'm, I'm just like, like holding the tone of being like an awesome dad. And 
the resistance or the kind of the vibrations of you can't do that, you're going to screw it up, you're going to, you know, like all of that stuff. And to some extent, that's useful to explore. But at some point, I had to be like, I've done that to death. Like, nope, not to, not today, Satan. And just like, like, enjoy that kind of resistance, because it gives me an opportunity to, like you say, make my prayer be strong. Like, how would how would my prayer get strengthened? if there wasn't the other things picking at it? How would your painting get beautiful if you didn't have to like wrestle with it and be like, nope, I'm finishing it. What if you walked away every time it got hard? Right, right. And that's the thing is like to, when I'm in it, when I get in it and I'm like, I'll remember those moments, all those moments where I just looked at it and was like, oh no. This is just, oh, this is just frustrating me. Realizing that if I just picked up the brush and maybe even just started making some dots, you know, that would activate that field of connectedness, of interest, of forcing myself in, in a certain way to, to do what I know will help unlock that stream, you know? And it's, 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 it's something, it's often really simple things and um, holding a kind of, you know, it, it can help to have some kind of, you know, regular practice mm -hmm. to, uh, to really shift that. Um, Cause it is a, a habit that we get in of, of thinking certain ways, you know, those voices are habitual and they've been trained over a long period of time. <laughs> We've taken them on from all over the place. So it's like to create new habits that can be, you know, that can counter those, you know, health things that we know are healthy. And I think body movement is one of those most important ones. Mm -hmm. I breathe so much better when I reach my fingers out like this. Oh, that's great. It's almost like my hands become lungs. Speaking of simple body movements, you know, for times that. in front of the screen. Just stretching all your fingers out and your arms and just like reaching up. I do the, you know, reaching up, think, talking about trees, you know, mm -hmm. to really just like extend all of your limbs uh, and just shoot that energy through, you know, that, yeah. that is, it is, it is. It's like, there's a kind of um, space that I, I've definitely discovered in the psychedelic space where I feel like lightning goes through my, goes through all my veins and just pushes out all the gunk and mm -hmm. uh, and it's so refreshing it's like oh my god thank you for that clearing mm -hmm. um it helps it helps the the real work you know you're a big fan of lightning <laughs> me too i used to wear a, a little golden lightning earring like in uh for many years it was given to me by a very special special human and it was taken mm -hmm. by the ocean, which I felt was appropriate. But I think of it, I'm, I love lightning. Ocean's yeah, lightning. kind of undeniable. The, Paul Stamets told us something very interesting. He, he got on the train for our two month anniversary of, of the vision oh. train, because we, we, we had this prompt um, to all paint mushrooms in celebration of the, their massive healing um, gifts. And uh, that was our, became our first exhibition. And um, he told us that the, he talked about going out. He, it was an invitation. He said to go out and take off all your clothes, go out into the woods and lie naked on the earth and know that the mycelium, the connection between the mycelium and your body and that electrical surge is very powerful and healing. And talking also about how lightning actually activates when the lightning hits the earth, it activates the mycelium. So activates yes, it. The I'll, I'll, I'll have to ask him and activates in what way? Yeah, <laughs> creatively. Little, right, creatively. Activate cool. Creatively. So, I mean, I'm sold on the thing, on the vision train. Oh, yay. <laughs> have like, you been I like, no, I, I, I mean, I sort of kind of knew, but I was like, I don't really draw that much. Um, but I sort of feel like maybe there's a place that I can go and hang out. And anyway, now. 
yes, please. And, you know, we're coming up on our year anniversary and we're about to, we're, we're pulling together the cars and the visions to create an exhibition that will be um, art for the Regenesons. Um, that is that is, the next theme? That is the next theme. You know, so what puzzle piece do you have and what part do you want to play? And we're going to have uh, events that we're going to be um, creating a bunch of events around this. We're also going to be a part of the Design Science Studio launch, which is this is incredible that? program that I've been a part of, which is by the Buckminster Fuller Institute. And this is something that uh, Bucky predicted for this time that there would be... Um, this um, decade, the design science decade, where great visionaries of, of the time would come together and, and, and design a world that really works 100% for all. And then, so this is a kind of an incubator that they have started that is, I'm a part of the first cohort. It's over 144, um, creative visionary characters of all different kinds of walks and talks so 145 <laughs> well i'm i'm one of the I, I don't know if it's exactly 144 but that's one of the you know great sacred geometry numbers right and uh but we're, we're going to be doing this big launch end of next month wow. and it's coincidental in some ways synchronistic with the vision trains one year anniversary and I'm a part of the studio with the vision train as my project. And so, you know, this is just the kickoff though, in many ways of this decade. And as my dear friend Lucian would say, the decade of deliverance, you know, this is, this is the time of the Regenesans that has also been prompted um, like the re Renaissance from an information um, surge, you know, and it's a, it's, it's a time for us to get really creative with what we do know and what we, um, you know, what we have available to us to create a world that will continue to flourish and not go towards dystopia, you know, and extinction because we're on that edge. Um, and, you know, some may, may argue that, but I think it's becoming more and more apparent and um, so I would love for you to join us and we could even, we could do all kinds of things in the vision train. We can share, we can have another conversation. We could do a little workshop. We can just get together and draw. And this goes for all mm -hmm. of you listening out there too. If you're interested, please check out the vision train, look it up. There's going to be, we're, we're starting a new platform to, um, to interact off of Facebook um, but Facebook oh, is one of the one of the ways that um, there's a group there, the nonstop vision train global art jam, where you if you can get in there, you have to answer some questions. And remember what I said about being an artist. I believe everybody's an artist. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, there's some questions that you are invited to creatively answer. And, uh, and in there, the first announcement, you'll find the Zoom link to jump on the train. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, that's I one way you can I also get you can also get on through the website and um, and fill out right. a little application there. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I subconsciously stole your name for the name of my upcoming conference. What's the name of your upcoming conference? The Mount Tam Psychedelic Integration Family All Star Jamboree. Oh, I love that. How you know how the did, jam? The jam. Oh no, we're jamming like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just jam together. There, yeah, I think that it's time. Well, there's so many, you know, there's just so many conferences that are very, very serious. You know, like the science, you know, the, the psychedelic science, you know, you know, coffee hour or whatever it is, you know, symposium. And so I just, you know, the, the psilocybin summit, you know, has, has been sort of on the edge of all that already. And I kind of wanted to see if we could, you know, go even a little sillier and weirder. Well, you know, the train would love to come, um, bring some weird, bring some color, bring some, bring some art. And, you know, we're able to hook ourselves in, you know, mm. we're, you know, trains like their cars are connected by couplers. They look like this and they kind of like, mm -hmm. they push and they pull They're like little hands. Um, 
So we would love to rock up with a bunch of artists to any conferences that you know of. I mean, the, we, we're, we're aiming to put together a really nice little collective of live artists virtually, you know, and you can, you, you get a window into everybody's world and their creative studio. And that can be just such a nice compliment to a, to, to a conference. Well, I mean, we can do that because I just collapsed time and space recently. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> did you know that, did you know that trains also brought us time? So this is the whole mm, part the of trains the trains got to run on time that we got to go back on those tracks in terms like, let's collapse that time and space. So, okay. So, so you did. And well, what that means is that I was looking, so my two dimensional thing is a bunch of post-it notes on the wall that just have like, you know, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and it's got people's names and it's all plugged okay. in. And I was like, very expansive. It's like, oh yeah, we'll have all this great stuff. And I was like, well, wait, if I do the math, that's just 21 spots. That's 21 hours of content. And I can fill that yesterday. And then I realized, well, like all that means is I just need another Zoom account. Mm -hmm. And then I can run things concurrently. Mm -hmm. So, and mm -hmm. then that means I can have infinite Zoom accounts. Mm -hmm. which means I can have infinite <laughs> things happening over the course of this weekend. I mean, yeah. 42 hours, you know, let's see, you know, see what we can do. But there, what I'm saying is there, there's room for the train. Yes. Yes. There's room. And you know, what we're discovering too, is we're starting to explore the breakout room potentials mm -hmm. and um, you know, to be, you can be on one train in a sense, like in one zoom, zoom session, and then you can have all these other other breakout rooms that, you know, depending on the interests, depending on the conversations, what's going on, mm -hmm. you can pop on over here, pop on over there. And I'm excited of what is going to continue to evolve out of this, you know, of what yeah. we're, you know, the Zoom world that we're experiencing, you know, through this past year, like pretty much everybody's probably been on Zoom. You know, like where, mm -hmm. what's, what, what are the next evolutions out of that, that are going to also really support, you know, that, that being together and being able to jump into other rooms and spaces. And have you been on Ozo yet? Ozo? Nope. Ozo is kind of like a zoom room, but it's three dimensions, but you can walk around. It's like Ooh. a circle. And then it has like a background, you know, it's like you're on the beach. You're on this um, veranda on the beach and you see little ovals with people's faces in it walking around. Oh my goodness. And then you click in and then you're in like a circle of five people chatting and then you can leave that one. You can go over to another one. We have a, through the design science studio, uh, we've created this world on Topia is the platform. And it's mm. like, a, it looks like a drawing kind of like it's very two dimensional, but you're like this little character and you can walk around and you can explore and you can go into different worlds and different experiences. And we have a, a, a vision train station in this world. That's adorable. It is so, it's so fun. It's so cute. And it's makes it, it makes it more accessible for people that don't have the VR, you know, the headsets and stuff, because that's a whole world. Right. But, but we're a couple of years out from that and <laughs> we are, we're a couple of years out from everybody having a VR thing. And, yeah. you know, Second Life is just too weird. <laughs> it's, just it's, like... it's fascinating, though. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm all for the, the exploration. You know, when I talk mm -hmm. talking about exploring new, new lands, you know, that's mm -hmm. really the space where, where it's happening, you know, in these, in these worlds. And, you know, what's possible? Let's, I mean, we have, we have an opportunity to build within these places um, prototypes, of mm -hmm. of of potential actual uh, environments that we can have in this world, you know, as an as a way of world building, um, you know, and stepping towards that, you know, rather than you know, and I think there's so many video games, right? Like people are obsessed with these war games. I mean, geez, like I, how can we how can we turn some of that 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 energy, you know, that it, that feeds through that field towards like, you know, collaboration, collaboration and having beautiful, like, um, you know, gardens and music. And I mean, that's just a different, it's a, it's, it's a bit of a different environment <laughs> mm -hmm. rather than a war field. I mean, which one do you want? 
and I mean, there's the argument of like, well, people have, you know, there's a, there's a need for that, that sense of con that conflict, but where can, how can we alchemize that towards, towards a, a towards something that's really beneficial rather mm -hmm. than against each other? Well, how much of that need for conflict is a result of, I mean, we were talking about struggle earlier and how struggle creates growth. And so, you know, how much of war games is that, that healthy struggle and how much of it is a trauma response yeah. based on living yeah. in the world that has creates that in abundance. And, and it's hard to know. Exactly. And coping with it. And I would, I, I, I would guess that all of us carry a degree of trauma that has been passed on, on to us, no matter what we've experienced in this specific life, but mm -hmm. a trauma that's passed on through our DNA mm -hmm. uh, that is also to be addressed, <laughs> you know, and, and how do we address that and unravel that? to come to a point of where we are actually able to really choose where we want to put our focus, right? Um, to be free, like, what are we? Who are we? What are we doing here? And when you look out into the world, you look online, you know, there's so much that is generated through the desire to sell you something and for you to be something, to fit into a certain kind of, you know, image and that is you know for young people out there for she's we're all like we it's so hard to get away from you know mm -hmm. and to be like okay what am i actually and what is actually going on i mean how many of us live in a story i mean pretty much everybody in some kind of narrative of what we think is happening in the world we can it's impossible to know everything that is mm -hmm. happening in the world. And then we devise all these stories and, and ways of interpreting it. And uh, gosh, we all think we know what's going on. So many people walk around and talk around like, like they know what's up. But I think like there's this kind of humbling of, of, mm -hmm. of realizing that, that we don't know and that we are interested and curious. Um, right. Yeah. And that's a tough thing also, because, you know, when we're talking about how we interpret it, we're not just doing that mentally, you know, we're, we're interpreting it through our bodies and our nervous systems. And, you know, that's, you know, our flight and our fight and flight responses, you know, our, our aggression, our need to dominate, you know, our need to collect and hoard, you know, a lot of that I, I assumes, you know, it's physiological, it's like, you know, and so it's like, you know, when you're talking about having lightning bolts shoot through our body, it's like, it just feels to me like it's so purifying for my nervous system so that I have more of a chance to actually have a choice about how I respond to the story and maybe even right. rewrite some of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, yes to that, that clearing <laughs> and that opportunity. And um, whew, we got a lot to do. We got a lot to do. And we also have a lot to undo. Mm -hmm. And only three minutes to do it. <laughs> you know, pressure is sometimes the biggest gift. I know when there's a, three minutes left to the song and I'm on stage and I'm painting and I'm like, all right, we're going to blast that color in there right now. And boom, as soon as that song and up into that little nectar of the last tone, you know, mm. I savor it. And it is something about time compressing and time expanding and going into that. Oh infinite space you're, you're like always in you're in the great british baking show huh are you familiar with the great british baking show i am not <laughs> well it's, it's you know it's a tv show with no violence really it's a bunch of people in a tent in england uh baking crepes and pies and stuff like that but they have a certain amount of time to do it in <laughs> you know they get this countdown you know and they're like trying to arrange the strawberries up until like the last second yeah maybe we should start a show like that <laughs> for right. for for our our team i love that i've never seen well, there it, was though. one on airbrushing bodies where the contest you know it was a reality uh -huh. show contest where they were airbrushing bodies and there was 
a visionary artist that I met at like symbiosis and I was, you know, only once. And I was like, wait, she's one of the airbrushers. Yes. She's one of my dear, dear friends. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 She was on the airbrush show. I think she won too. Nice. She won one of those shows. Yeah. She's amazing. (laughs) (laughs) That's fantastic. Well, we put ourselves into a container, you know, of, and, and, and put a time on it and, you know, and let's go. I did actually a mushroom painting. It was during Burning Man um, Mm -hmm. this past year in the multiverse. I did a big painting of of a mushroom in the, at the mushroom on the infinite playa, which was a project Mm -hmm. that Android Jones, Paul Stamets and David Satori um, created. And it was one of those epic moments. And I was playing, uh, I was gold cap the DJ, incredible human, created a set for us for Mushroom Magic. And so we all got together and made art and it was streamed live into the Infinite Mushroom. It was so cool. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, that's a good painting. I've decided that's one of those paintings that I'm not going to touch again because all that energy of that moment Mm. and all those little decisions, you know. Yeah, it was a full circle, full cycle. That is awesome. Yeah, so Thanks everybody being... check it out. Check, check out you, if you look up look up my work online. I think that was that going to be the pitch you were going to go for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was a th- I was I was going to say thank you. I was going to first exude gratitude in your direction, and then I was going to ask you to tell us how we can find you and all that kind of stuff. Well, we're just compressing time here, and I'm jumping ahead of you. Um, so yeah, look up Amanda Sage on the interwebs you'll probably and if you look up images you'll see lots of images you can go to my website amandasage.com i also make clothes with my dear friend uh shabnam q in los angeles we she's the designer that turns my paintings into awesome fractals and puts them on clothes we're starting to we're our next collection is going to be in hemp and um Mm. printing on hemp and um yeah mushroom magic that's going to be actually that that collection and Mushroom Bloom and uh, the Vision Train. Come check out the Vision Train, um, visiontrain.org and um, check out the Design Science Studio. Check out the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors in New York. Um, so many, you know, great projects happening out there. Meow Wolf, we didn't talk about Meow Wolf, but I am Did one of you the do artists. a thing? Yes, I'm a part of a nice. project in Las Vegas that is nice. actually opening within the next couple of weeks. And it was on invitation from Allison Gray and Alex Gray. And we collaborated with a bunch of different artists um, for this, uh, this installation called the Projected Desert. So nice. keep an eye out I for saw that. Car- I saw one of Carrie's rooms. Carrie Thompson made a video of his room. Oh yes, incredible, absolutely incredible. So maybe we'll discuss that. He's on in a couple of weeks. We'll discuss that with him. Oh, yeah. We're um, going to have to talk a lot more about, about Meow Wolf in the coming um, times. We haven't been able to say anything about it for the past year. Mm. And um, also Entheon will be opening uh, sometime this year. That's the, the Visionary Art Museum um, that will house the sacred mirrors that's at Cosm. And um, yeah, lots of, lots of great things that are blossoming and ready to bloom um, through these really, you know, challenging times, but I feel like we have some really great opportunities ahead and I look forward to it. I look forward to all of it. That's amazing. It's been super fun talking to you. Yeah, it has been a great time. Thank you so much for the invitation. If you want to hang out for another minute after we turn the cameras off, you know, I'll I'll just sort of say goodbye to everybody. (laughs) We can Right on. Um, Sounds good. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for, thank you, Amanda. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Please do check out Amanda on all of her channels. Uh, I would like to thank our team. Thank you, Brian Markowitz at Deadhead Land. Um, Please support Deadhead Land by liking them on Facebook or even donating to their Patreon. Thank you to the tech team, Stephen and Skyler of Livestream Remote. And Once again, I'm Daniel Shankin. This has been Instrumental Breakthroughs by TAM Integration. Much love to you all. (laughs) Choo-choo.